Hey, this is Seth Green from MarketDominationLLC.com and welcome, let's move the mic, uh, welcome to this week's episode, first episode of Fix My Direct Mail and Open Office Hours. So if you are joining us on Zoom, you can jump in and ask questions live. If you are on Facebook in any of this or LinkedIn or YouTube or any of the seven places I am right now, um, you can type in your question below this video and hopefully I will see it and answer it. Um, we will dive right in and we will talk about, this is Fix My Direct Mail. And then 10 from 15 minutes now, we'll dive into Fix My Online Ads. All right, so first piece of direct mail I got. Look at this. Are you ready? So it looks like a handwritten font that looks really well done. It, it's got like skips in the ink. Um, it's got a handwritten address on the top without a company name. It's got a live stamp. Um, oh, if you had made it slanted, that would have been a tiny, tiny bit off center. That would have been perfect. Um, so perfect sneak up mail, even though it's larger than a regular envelope, I'm, I would still open this because it looks like a person sent it to me. It could be an invitation or something like that. Uh, boo. Oh man, I was all excited to see what they sent. Um, so there's a lip note, there's a post-it note with another handwritten font. This decade, next decade may not be as great as the last for stocks. He spelled four wrong, F-O-U-R. We think MB, whatever is a good, great solution. Please give me a call to discuss. It's the guy, it's a wholesaler selling me this mutual fund that wants me to recommend it to my clients. Um, and then, here is a little blur. This isn't a letter. It's not personalized. It's just a little bullet about why you shouldn't chase the S&P 500 um, in the 2020s. Are there a theory on it? Hey, Richard, long time no talk. So, man, they get an A plus for the handwritten envelope in the live stamp. They get an A plus for having a post-it note that has something spelled wrong, like I really buy that he wrote this. That was really well done. Um, I get, I, I give them like an F. I didn't ask, I did, it, there's no letter. There's no personalization on the inside other than the lift note. Um, there's no introduction of who this guy is or what this fun company is or why I should even talk to them. Oh man, hey Courtney, hope you're okay. Uh, how is the weather? Um, Courtney's in Hurricane Alley um, over in Puerto Rico. Um, so they get an A plus on the delivery and an F for what's inside. Oh, so close. You guys were so uh, awesome job on the first half. All right. Is a postcard, uh, from our insurance agent and client, Tom Larson of uh, 716 insurance. Um, it's a, it's got a testimonial on it. It's got, Hey, if you've got a referral, we'll send you Paula's donuts, target gift card or pizza. Then there's a easy party receipt. It's supposed to be a recipe time. I got a typo. I'm not one to talk though about a sausage appetizer. And then there's a tip uh, where a client asked, would my auto insurance be affected if my son or daughter got a DUI? And then there's a answer to that question. So this is really smart keep in touch strategy from Tom. He's got a testimonial on it, a recipe and a tip of a question that a client called in with. So that's really smart not just the testimonial and the recipe, but it's also really smart because um, the tip of the client asked a question and he wrote down the answer and sent it out as a frequently asked question, that's smart. So if your clients are asking you the same questions over and over and over again, every time they ask you something, write it down, write down what your answer is and put that in a library uh, where people that you send to people. If, um, if it were up to me, Tom would record that on video if he hasn't already and put that on all Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, all his social media profiles, his website, so that everybody could see what the questions were and what the tips were, because that's going to start conversations with him and bring him more business and more referrals. But Tom, that's an awesome keep in touch strategy. Hey, Ron, uh, looking forward to seeing you. Oh, and hey, Tom, there you are. Tom says, thanks. You are welcome. So I love the recipe. I love the testimonial and I love the tip. Um, so I thought that's really well done. Um, full disclosure, we are clients of Tom's. Tom is client of ours. Tom is a mastermind member. I've known Tom for, God, like what has it been like? Almost 15 years. 
I may have known you longer than I've known my wife. Uh, but don't tell her that if she's not watching. Um, all right, Court, uh, Courtney is okay. Awesome. Ron, Tom, Dale, looking forward to seeing you March, Friday, March 13th at our local mastermind group. Tamara is here. Tammy, long time no talk. How are you? All right. Awesome. I love it when people show up. All right. Then, um, so we got this from the wonderful folks at Spectrum, our cable and internet provider. Now, they did not try and sneak up on me. They used a window envelope, which is a dead giveaway that it's commercial mail. However, they did something very sneaky because we're Spectrum customers and they wrote important account information inside. So I opened it because I thought it was a bill. Maybe I forgot to pay something. Um, wasn't sure. So I open it and inside I find you should switch your cell phone service to Spectrum. So they got my attention because I already have an account with them and I thought it was yellow. So I thought it was like a pass through invoice that I forgot to pay the cable bill. Um, so on that respect, they did a good job. They got me to open it, even though it was obviously commercial mail, but, uh, then they made me an offer to switch to spectrum for cell phone service, which I'm not going to do. They've got like four bullet, five bullet points as to why you should do it. $14 a gigabyte, unlimited $45 a line. Um, why not pick a company you already trust? But what it doesn't have is I should get some type of deal because I'm an existing customer and they should reference that. I would have referenced that. The pack is all blank. It was free real estate. You could have filled this all up and you could have added a couple more pieces of paper without increasing the postage. So when in doubt, I would go with long copy. I would always, you can never be too long. You can only be too boring. I get this question all the time. Does long copy or short copy pull better? If it's boring, then it's too long. If it's fascinating, people will read all of it, no matter, I mean, the fastest, the most, the book category that gets the most sales, physical books, not eBooks, physical bookstore books off the shelves and off Amazon um, is teen fiction. And the millennials are all supposed to not read anymore, right? They're all supposed to be living on Instagram and Snapchat and on their phones, but yet, teen fiction sells more physical book copies than any other category. So you cannot be too long. You can only be too boring. The longest sales letter I ever read was about 120 pages. And I bought the product that was $5,000 at the end of it. And I read every word. And I know how much that, I know that was the Dan Kennedy sales letter. And I know how much he sold of that product. Um, so I know a lot of people read that sales letter and wrote that check. So, and read the whole thing. So if people aren't reading your copy, it's because it's boring and not relevant to them, not because it's too long. If it's fascinating, think about it. My wife in her book club with Tayton sitting right over there uh, over, uh, on the other side of my wall just read The Nightingale by Kristen, whatever the hell her name is, whatever the heck her name is. Um, that book was like a thousand pages um, about France. Nazi occupied France and the Holocaust and the sisters and what they went through. And my wife read it, her book club read it. I read it, um, every word. So if you can, if she can fascinate you, you can fascinate your customers. Okay. Tom says, do you think the recipe will make the, them keep the card around longer? So here's what I would do. So that's an interesting thought. So you also do, which I, you turn me on to reminder media which is the bi-monthly magazine via snail mail to clients and prospects, which has tear out cards for them to keep. Now I do inspirational quotes. I notice you usually do the recipes. Um, what I would test, I'd love to see you test sending like a file box, like a $5 plastic file card box to get to Target or, or, or Bed Bath & Beyond, Target or wherever, or Walmart, and send it to them and have your logo on it, like put a slap a label on it, Tom's recipe box and tell them every month to save it. Um, now, will they save the recipe card? Um, they might. The only issue is your website and your phone number aren't on here, Tom, and your return address is tiny. Um, so I would add, I would make it bigger. And then my question would be, give them instructions to save the card. And then my other thought is, um, are you sending this just to clients or are you also sending this to prospects? 
Uh, hey, Chris. Oh, long time. Man, it's been years. How are you? I haven't seen you in forever. Hey, Linda. Good morning. Always happy to see you bright and early. All right. Uh, a couple more. All right. We'll do one more. Uh, okay. So this is St. Matthew's Church. St. Matthew's Church is some of the most brilliant marketing I've ever seen. I give them money even though I'm a Jew and will burn in flames probably. No, just kidding. I'm not going to burst into flames for sending a church money just to stay on their list. So this is a church by mail. There's no physical building. You don't go to mass every Sunday. You don't watch it on TV. It's not an evangelist preacher. You send money and take it on faith that they, whoever they are, are praying for you somewhere. It's a brilliant, they're selling air. Um, faith, hope, and air. It's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. So this is their sales letter. You won't be able to see it. Can I put something behind it? This is their sales letter, which you can see has different color fonts, doodles, um, highlights, all kinds of crazy stuff in it to make it stand out and get it read. And they are sending you back the Biblical Seeds of Success Prosperity plan, which is every month you're supposed to, or every week, you're supposed to write it, rip one out, say what you're praying for, what you want them to pray for you for, and send them money. Amazing. They are printing money. I, I, I wish I had a church. They're doing millions and millions and millions of dollars all via direct mail with people sending in money and just saying, pray for me. So listen, if any of you watching want me to pray to you, send me a check to Market Domination LLC at 5888 Main Street, Williams of New York, 14221, and I will pray for you. Um, I didn't send you a brilliant sales letter. That was my, so they have a much better pitch than I do. But if they can get people to send them money for nothing, come on, you can do a better job marketing. Uh, Tom says his first test was to clients only. Okay, awesome. Um, I love it as a warm, fuzzy strategy. I would send it to prospect. You've got a prospect list, right? Unconverted leads, people who called in, got a quote, didn't buy, people you met. I would use it to trip on them too. All right. That is our episode of Fix My Direct Mail. Um, if you'd like us to help you implement direct mail marketing or make it better in your business, go to marketdominationllc.com and request a fill out the form that's next to the video and request a strategy session. And we'll jump on a Zoom video chat and talk to you.